Love you. Oh, wow. Whew. Now, keep standing for a moment. Keep standing for a moment. Because the first thing I want to say, I, I, the first slide I had for the PowerPoint this morning says this, you're completing one major season in your life and entering another. Don't back up. Now, tell someone in front of you, don't back up. Keep moving forward. And so it becomes important that we keep moving forward right now. Now let's thank God that we are moving forward. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. This is such a key time for us. And I, I do believe the meeting was... Uh, very, very key. I thought it was interesting. I, I, for Christmas, I got a new signet ring. And uh, it was given to me by the staff. They designed it and had it made. And it's got, of course, uh, the four directions, the compass on it, fetch a compass. And that's a scripture, believe it or not. And uh, when I walked in to the hotel at Galloway and walked into the elevator, it was the very symbol that's on the floor of the elevator. And uh, the Lord spoke to me, right, and I didn't say this there, but said that this week is the directive week for this part of America. It is actually the directive week for America. And uh, I'm not sure what all that ha has happened this week, but something has greatly changed. And uh, Trisha, um, I mean, uh, Cheryl, stand up. You know, you get them mixed up, except <laughs> they're both lovely. And uh, without John, Cheryl's different. You know, when, with John, Cheryl has to stay on alert most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> when you walked in, you had a strange word over your head. It was tent of meeting. And the Lord says, get ready for I'm establishing a new meeting place for you. The get ready for the Lord says, I'm going to, uh, and don't try to get too, too stable in everything you're doing at first. The Lord says, I'm moving you and I'm establishing a new meeting place. And you'll be known as one who establishes meeting places. Now, Lord, I loose that over her in Jesus' name. That's it. Now. And, uh, you know, timing is so important for us. And being in time is so important for us. And uh, that's what I felt like we were in this weekend. I felt like being here was very key. Turn with me, if you will, to Matthew 14. Um, I want to share something first about what the Lord was doing, and then we'll just get into what I, I feel like is uh, we're here for. Because, uh, and if you're having problems with that PowerPoint, I, I'll just do it without it. It's not a problem. Y'all don't strive in it back there. Uh, because I, I think it's very important that we hear what God's saying today. Um, one of the things that happened to me when I was 18 and the, the Lord visited me was he revealed to me himself as the God of Israel. Uh, and uh, so it's never been a question for me, the importance of us understanding Israel and uh, how important his covenant is with Israel and our alignment with Israel. And of course, my kids live there. And since then, my whole life has really revolved that way. And of course, the scripture that he gave me was, if uh, you will give me out of Proverbs chapter 3, I was in the hospital, I had had a severe, um, um, our family had gone into some severe crisis, I was physically debilitated uh, from uh, what I had gone through, and um, the Lord spoke to me out of Proverbs chapter 3, 
and said to me, uh, he visited me while I was in the hospital. The Lord put me in the room with a Pentecostal pastor, and you know, that helped. <laughs> I had met the Lord Jesus Christ, but I had never met Holy Spirit. And he introduced me to Holy Spirit. And uh, he told me how to Holy Spirit was to move in my life. And after he got out of the hospital, I stayed there, and Holy Spirit visited me for three days. And um, so now I was getting to know Holy Spirit and know the Spirit of God. And um, so I was reading. He told me to read a passage in Psalms, read a passage in Proverbs, a chapter in the Old Testament, a chapter in the New Testament every day. And he said, if you'll do that and just spend time with the Lord, you'll be okay. And I have made that a pattern of my life. Uh, and that's been... Uh, almost 50 years now. and um, But the scripture the Lord quickened to me in, in when I was in the hospital when I was 18 was, uh, lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and depart from evil and I will direct your path. Now what that means is he levels out the way we go. Let's think about the song we're singing. Matter of fact, I was thinking about when you were up there, James, the real fear in America right now is to breathe. And here you were singing prophetically, just breathe. And he was saying if you'd breathe him in, and I, what I heard while you were up here, if you would breathe him in, you'll start laughing at what the enemy's trying to do in your life. Now, that's a word for us this morning. Just keep breathing. Breathe him in. Quit walking around in fear that you're going to breathe in the virus. I mean, you know, it, we've always had viruses. We've always had plagues. Thank God he says that he can protect us from the plagues. And you just have to grab hold of it and keep moving. And... Uh, and it, that scripture goes on to say in Proverbs 3 that if you'll give me your first fruit, I will do three things. I'll heal all of your bones and nervous system. Now, uh, now God is telling me this when I'm 18, and uh, we had a lot growing up. And my dad had acquired all the inheritance of his family. And sometimes uh, when I'm speaking in Shreveport or somewhere like that, we'll drive through there. I drove Chad through there, and I said, you know, we own all of this. And it was a big thing. But yet corruption creeped in, and uh, problems creeped in, and the land got messed up. And the resources got messed up. So now you understand why I write all the books I write. Because it's my life, you know, I'm messed up and uh, getting unmessed. And after 50 years, still getting unmessed, you know, you, because you go through a lot. And it goes on to say in Proverbs 3 that if you'll do that, then if you'll give me those first fruits, I'll heal you, but then I'll fill your barns. Then I'll give you, your vats will be full. In other words, you'll be filled with wine flowing down. And I don't mean to run out and get drunk and buy a bunch, big bunch of liquor. I'm just saying you'll be filled with new revelation constantly. That's what it means. And so, and you'll always have communion. So, in doing that, I had to learn first fruits. I had to learn the power of first fruits. That's probably the key to my life. If I would give the best to the Lord, then he would take all the rest that I have every month and he would bless it. Now, that's what he says over in Romans. That's not an Old Testament thing. He says, if you'll give me the best portion of your lump, I'll bless the whole lump. Now say out loud, I want all my lumps blessed. And so my life became one of giving and getting the lumps blessed. And it has remained that. Now, 
with that learning first fruits, you find every month there is very unique in the word of God. We're just not trucking through the earth realm down here. We're not just wandering or meandering down through here. God has set us in time. There's a reason you're here now. Now, that's important. And he chose you for this time frame in the earth, just like he chose David for his time frame in the earth. Uh, Acts 17 is about that. And um, so in the midst of that, I had to start seeing that every month of every year was key. And the word of God was developed around time. God's not in time, but we're in time. And the word of God was timed through uh, harvest and prosperity. Now, so don't throw out the concept of being prosperous because it is what you were meant to be. Now, that doesn't mean that we're all supposed to be multimillionaires. It means what you were intended to be, what your hand is put to, you will succeed in seeing that accomplished. That's what prosperity means. And yet, the only way you can do that is move in time with him and move through time with him in the harvest cycles that he has you. So every month I always look at what the month's about, and then I apply it to what the year's about, and then I watch the place that I go to because he predetermines your time and place. Everybody say, we're in New Jersey. Jersey. There's something about this weekend that makes New Jersey the most important place of change. And then while I'm here, my, my daughter-in-law in Israel, her dad dies unexpectedly in Texas. The only way we could get them back to Texas was to bring them to New Jersey. I mean, they're here right now. They're at the airport. I mean, the timing, and now you scheduled this September, me being here, them, the only place we could get them through, because it's a lot of maneuvering you have to do out there right now to fly, was to bring them to New Jersey. Now they're here from Israel. It shows you God's sovereign timing. It shows you how he orders your every step, whether you know it or not. The the song, Uh, Ruth, whether whether you know it or not, you had to be here in New Jersey to get what God has for Pennsylvania. Uh, Come give it. So the Lord says to Daniel and Amber, you have known father in one way, but he says, now you will know my sovereign fatherhood over your life in a way that you have never experienced. For today, I am enthroning myself over you and I will go down deep into those emotions and into those ways of thinking that have desired a sovereign strength that was unnecessary known in your bloodlines. And so I say today, I break off from you those lackings that were inherent in your bloodline, and I loose the sovereignty of my throne and my power and my will over your lives today to accomplish everything that I have put in your bloodline to accomplish. And the Lord says, I brought you back here, and this is for all of us here. I brought you back to this place to return you so that I can start moving you forward again. I say, I brought you here from the place you were in, from the position that you presently had, so that I could advance you in and accelerate you beyond 
what is trying to stop you. I say, I brought you here to give you new breath and to give you new energy and to even activate your voice in a way that it's never been activated. For I say, this is the ending of a season, but I already have your new direction in place. And in that, I say, you'll be moving. And the Lord says, you'll be moving with me into the place that I have for you. And you'll be developing a model, not a model that you've seen or even been aligned with, but a model of change that is needed for now. I say that's what will invade New York, saith the Lord. I say I am calling you to New York. I am calling you into a place to create a model here so you can advance into a city and save a city a city of cities. I said, I will use you to return even to Newark and to say to Newark, you will be restored. Let's let watch God wipe you out so you can be rebuilt, saith the Lord. I say, I'll take you to Trenton and I'll start moving in a new way for Trenton has resisted what I have longed to do. And because Trenton resists, a state resists and and then a nation suffers. I said, so I'm going to start the wheels turning in Trenton today. And the model you build will be a model that is sent out and recreated throughout the entire region. I say, get ready. I am causing a center to be established so that meetings can be held. And I say, out of the center, a new plan of meetings will Will come and a new mobilization will come and a people will arise and say beginning in March the wind blew in 2020 and his hand moved and we were established to advance into our future <laughs> and so I, I think this is a key time and with that, when you look at this month, let's look at this year now. Let's get a picture of the year that we're in from Hebrew. This is what it looks like. It is uh, the line of the tribe of Judah is blowing heaven, and that means heaven shifting. And that means a new wind's coming. It's how would you say, how do you see that? Well, in Hebrew, it's the year 5780, so when you go look in the Word of God, 80 means pay. Uh, I, I Hebrew is a, a whole language, so it, it has pictures, it has sounds, it has uh, uh, meaning. And so it's pay, that's what 80 looks like, and what it says is you're expressing and vocalizing and speaking in a new way I'm breathing in a new way, and you're going to breathe in a new way. That song was perfect for this morning. But what it looks like is the structure you've been in, now you're commanding your way into your future. What it says to us, the structure we've been in cannot at all hold us captive to keep us from moving forward. That's why it was important we come here today even in this, which is such a wonderful group of people and a wonderful model with wonderful uh, leaders. Let's thank God for the Rosellis. <laughs> and you see people like Cheryl here, and you see Pat here, and, and just wonderful leaders up here. But we had to come here to say, now we command our way out. And the Lord says, this is your day that I am commanding your way out. And I will start setting rear guards every day behind you. So you cannot back up. So I say, listen carefully every day. Because starting today, I'm going to start commanding you over how to move forward. He brought you from Georgia to hear that. Now. With that, let's look again at what face-to-face -face looks like. It means your speech is going to reflect your freedom. The sound of freedom is going to come by you coming into a new relationship. And so what it's like is 
there's a window pane forming over you. The enemy's trying to see through where you're going so he can ambush you. And yet, you've already seen how to stay ahead of it. Now, that's a word for you. The enemy cannot ambush you in the move ahead because you're going to stay one step ahead of him. And so, with that, the Lord is raising up now a priesthood for the future. Here's something else about this uh this season we're in. It's a season to call the winds into a new order. In other words, uh, lots of winds will start flowing, but what they're doing is they're creating shaking, and we're seeing that throughout our nation. They're creating shaking, and uh, they're, they're dividing things so they can be put back together. And they're also causing what's been scattered. Scattering is a curse. So what has been scattered in the past is being blown into a new order. So you almost have to have the wind to see your new order, especially for you, Nor uh, New York bread. And so it becomes important that we see this. But it also, we have entered this new era of 80. 80 means a new beginning of your testimony. By, and that's why the mouth becomes so important for us. Because you're going to have to speak from your past your beginning. Now, I better say that again or you'll get confused with it. You're going to have to speak from your past your new beginning. You've been through key things. And yet, there are certain things you want to speak into existence that you don't want to go through again. Yeah. Is, can, is, can anybody get a witness on that one? Now, and what God has been doing through the last season of your life is expanding you. So you have, that's why James' song today was so important, you have a greater capacity to breathe. Even though I have struggled taking a breath for two months, but during that service yesterday, something happened, and during, at this morning at 3 o'clock, it was gone. I mean... You know, I've been the walking poster child of intercession for the breath. So it's, it's important that we see that. But this season is a time. It, it, pay is linked with deliverance. It's linked that you have to cross over and be at a new place. You, you don't want to stay in any mud pit. You don't want to stay under the oppression of a hard labor you don't want to stay in the wilderness so there's several crossing overs for us this year now it brings you to this month which is a dar it's the month where of course esther is the book of the month in the word of god and uh it's about deliverance but Adar is about something else. It's about you seeing your provision for the future. Now, I'm going to say this out loud for us one more time. Adar is about, see, first fruits celebration is about provision. This, month, this year, this new era we've entered into is about provision. Uh, but this month is about Seeing your provision. See, this was the month in the Word of God where um, the people were told, go to your neighbors in Egypt and tell them you want everything they've got. Now think about that. Why is those neighbors had, if you understand the history of all of that, Joseph had created a new system of finance and established 12 distribution centers. And uh, therefore, he had created a, a, a great supply program in Egypt. Well, when it says a new Pharaoh that didn't know Joseph came along, that's where the oppression started. Because they respected 
him so much. And God gave him the ability to do that, not just, not for Egypt, really for God's people. And so what this new Pharaoh did, Pharaoh did was take the 12 distribution centers and cause those distribution centers to shift and take away all of the supply that God's people, the Israelites, had developed in Egypt and would trade scarabs for their supply. That's where scarabs come from, that creepy-looking bug. Or you see, you know, when you're looking at Egyptian things. Don't wear one of those. Uh, Because they represent an exchange of great wealth for control poverty. And so, this is the month where the Lord says, I'm ready for you to break into a new supply. Because you're going to move forward. And because you're going to move forward, you're going to have to have new supply. You can't have just the supply you have. And I don't think just us giving an offering will do that. Yet we have to give our portion of what God gives us to keep us moving because what he'll do, he'll fill our barn, the barn you're going to build. But what he's got to do also is show you how to ask for new supply. And that's where I feel like we're weak. We beg for money like the guy at the gate, beautiful. He sat there and begged for 38 years with his cup. We are not that people. Tell somebody that is not who you are. You have to know God already has... The kingdom is not built on need. The kingdom is built on, uh, on life and, and process. It's within you, so the Lord already has what you need in that. And yet, he does require us to ask. And so, here's the best example I can find of this month. And it's not an Old Testament example. It's a New Testament example where all of a sudden John the Baptist gets his head cut off so a season ends. But can I assure you a season will end one way or the other in our lives. Somebody's going to die. The car's going to quit running. Something will end a season And if you stay any longer in that season, there is no grace for it. Now, say this out loud. Grace is on the move here. (laughs) And so, the Lord knows he's got to do something because now he's training a whole new leadership group and only two of them from John's wineskin went with him and the others went back with the Pharisees. You're going to go one way or the other at the end. That's why when people look at us, we have had a successful church for 46 years in Denton, but we've ended it three times. So we didn't keep doing what that church did of the last season. So we would allow it to reform and come into who we are now. We're at a uh, three-month transition right now. And I'm in it to hear, how's the Lord changing us? What's he doing with us? Because, you know, as wild as we are, I don't want us to be an old wineskin. See? And so the Lord finally, his first lesson that he does for his disciples that are going to move the kingdom of God forward is he has been teaching and teaching and teaching. He's emotionally strained because of John's death. And so the disciples come to him and say, send all this crowd away. We've been taking care of them for three days. Now send them away. That also applies to where we've been. We've been taking care of this crowd for three days. Send them away. They need to eat. If you keep them here any longer, 
Uh, we just don't need this crowd right now. And the Lord said, I'm not going to send them away. You're going to feed them. See, I love it how at our hard place to move forward, we usually start telling the Lord what to do. And he looks at us and said, no, I'm about to show you something. That's why I've got you at this hard place. Because, yeah, now you know that if you weren't at this hard place, you'd never see it because you would be, have, uh, you wouldn't have the stress to see it. Now, before I share it, let's look at the tensions we have. Go ahead, Aaron. There, we're at a place in this season where there's leadership tensions. There's such political tension. Oh, my gosh. You don't even, you get tired of just hearing it. Uh, you want to look at some of those people and say, would you grow up? Good Lord. Or at least say something that makes sense, you know. At, we're, we're in a tension of the supernatural in our atmosphere. So if you're just walking around thinking everything around you is not moving, now do this with your chair. Just tap on it because it's moving under you. That is a proven physics principle. But right now, everything's moving. Everything's moving and changing. And a lot of it is supernatural. And you're going to have to be able to discern the supernatural. That's why I got that flu shot. Now, let me tell you what happened. I'm sitting there with Pam telling me how I'll end up being a zombie one day if I keep taking flu shots. <laughs> you know, some of us just have to go ahead and do what we have to do. And, and so I said, do you have a flu shot? I know it's late. And they said, no, we're out, unless you're over 66. I said, oh, Okay. Well, I am. And they said, well, no, we're out of that. And then she said, no, I just found we've got one dose. <laughs> well, here I am in February the 1st, which I usually, if I'm going to take one, I take it in October. They have one dose, and it's for us older people <laughs> because it does different things to us. I said, this is so supernatural. Well, Pam's just rolling her eyes back, saying, yeah, it's supernatural, all right. It has been set up just for you. And you can you imagine, and the day after I took it, I got bronchial asthma, and I've had bronchial asthma till this morning at 3 o'clock. Breathe. 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 James's word. James is something. We're going to sing it at the end again. Breathe. Breathe. I had Trisha pray for me. I've had Marty pray for me. I've had Ann pray for me. I've had everybody that I've run into pray for me. And then Chad is sitting there yesterday banging my chest and I broke a rib, I think. <laughs> They're going out to this fancy meal last night. I'm laying in the bed, <laughs> eating out of the bag. Thank God for the bag. Uh, and, and, but, and you can imagine for two months with me keeping my wife away when I'm at, uh, awake when I'm at home, coughing and gagging, and her getting up and said, supernatural. <laughs> she walked in at 1.30 a.m. and said, that supernatural shot you got is going to kill you, but it ain't going to be the shot. She said, I have not slept since you took your supernatural shot. <laughs> and you can't travel right now. They won't let you go anywhere. The whole world has been set against me. That's what she said. <laughs> so... We have to discern the supernatural. 
because we're in this tension. We're in one new man tensions in the church. We're not going to end up looking like this. God's doing something in us that's different. We have to have new, thank you. Now, now, so we're at this place where we're having to understand time has shifted. Our provisional tension, we're in it, but we have to shift. Therefore, we've got to say, Lord, do something. And he's saying here in Matthew 14, no, you're going to do something. And so what he tells them, he says, go out around that crowd and see what you can find. I do like this part a lot. You know, I mean, I could go around. It would be like me saying, listen, you three, go look in everybody's purse and see what they've got. That's what it would be like. <laughs> and, uh, and, of course, we're in New Jersey. You'll probably find knives, guns, and they'll probably turn on you. And some of these ladies will jump up and start knocking you in the head with whatever you've got. <laughs> yeah, even when you started coming toward them. So thank God we live in today. And... Uh, so the Lord, what he was doing was they found this boy and he had this, these few loaves and fishes. And he said, now let me show you what I'm going to do as you move forward right now. Now this is the key for us. He said, you're going to look at what you've got. You can look in your own purse. You're going to look at what you've got. And then you're going to bring it to me. I'm going to bless it. Whatever you've got. Because uh, the power of Father's blessing over what you've got has great action. And I think, we, I, I think we lose sight of this, Jody. You stand right here. We'll just prophesy over you since you tripped up. <laughs> the Lord says, uh, there's eyes watching how you move. The Lord says, this will be the season where I, my eye guides you into some places you haven't been before. And the Lord says, you're going to start speaking up to some people you haven't spoken up to. And the enemy tried to hit you to get you out of sync and fearful over what you are saying and doing. So the Lord says, the enemy's hit now. I'm hitting him back so you don't have to worry about that. The Lord says, you're going to find what's leaning, and you're going to say, this is going to be made straight. So the Lord says, this will be known as your straightening up season in New York. And the Lord says, you make a list, and you decree everything that needs to be straightened up will be straightened up. And speak it, and watch it start happening. And when words come forth to the contrary, you decree that God is capable to shut the mouth of that lion. So he said, bring it up here because my blessing is powerful. I don't think we realize how powerful his blessing is. I don't think we realize this year about our speaking and how powerfully it is going to have a creative power about it. See, this is what I'm trying to show you. So he lifted it up to the Father. He broke it. And he blessed it. I don't think we realize that when we, we are a very gifted people with a lot, but it has to be broke open in ways that's never been broke open before. Our gifts have to be broke open in ways. Our um, thinking processes have to be broken open in ways. That's why we had that deliverance conference, because see, trauma will seal itself right in the center of your brain and it has to be broken open so that you can start processing and seeing things in ways you've never seen them. And then all of a sudden, think about this. He said, now use what you, what I've shown you. See, now use this thing. Let's do, do, do this, for example. Wait, get that offering. Get it. You can get somebody else's too. I don't, it, if it'll, 
Oh, that works. <laughs> he looks at it. He, he lifts it up. But then he blesses it. He doesn't, it, it's not how much is in here. It's the power of him speaking into it. Because he's the guy who, the one who spoke the world into being. He speaks into it, and then all of a sudden, he breaks it open, and he says, now start using it in a new way. See, when you put it, bring an offering to the altar, that's really what's going on with it. And then all of a sudden, you're not letting go of that offering. He's saying, now you're able to multiply in everything you touch. You're going to be giving this and giving that and carrying it here and doing this with it. See, that's the, that's the season we're in. It, it's an exciting season because pay means, uh, one of the words it actually means is recompense. There is a payback coming. So every time you give, you're saying, I want to pay back. I'm going to thank you, Lord, of how you're multiplying, breaking open, blessing, and how I'm going to be able to pay back what needs to be paid back. Now, I started decreeing this in September. Really, it was probably the end of, end of August because that's usually when I start studying it through the Word of God. And so, 5780 in 2020, let's show that, Aaron, and we're going to leave it from there. I want to show you a couple more things. A new era has broken into the atmosphere. There's both our civic calendar and the, the Jewish calendar. They both have tremendous meaning this year. 5780 in the year of pay. But in, it is more than that this year. It is in the decade of pay. It is in the era of pay. See, and that means it's the era of speaking and multiplying. It's in the era of vocalizing change. See, that's what you want to understand. Uh, it's, the, it's in the era that Judah now is being reordered to go first and being repositioned. It's in an era that what happened here in Matthew 14 was a faith explosion. All of a sudden, when he spoke, everything exploded. And it multiplied. Everybody ate. And they took up baskets full. I think I said that right. To 12, which means for the new administration ahead. Now, that's what I want to leave for you. Because you're headed into your new administration. And yet, you want to head in with a confidence of multiplication. You want to head in with a confidence of, of freedom that you can be blessed going forward. Whoever you are. Lehman, I mean, God brought you here to say, I brought you here to bless you going forward. You're going forth. I mean, it's amazing what God is trying to show us, and all of a sudden, the excess of what will be used for tomorrow. In other words, I think he said, and we'll eat tomorrow. And if we need to take the 12, if the crowd grows, we can take the 12 baskets full, and we can cause those baskets to multiply now. In other words, we showed you two offerings multiplying, but now we can take the baskets and make them multiply. That's the way you have to think about it. 
and we're all part of it. Therefore, everything that's multiplying here is multiplying there. That's the way you look at it. And uh, so it becomes important that we see this because, see, all the enemy wants to do is remove your faith. He doesn't care if you believe. He just wants you to get rid of you with that faith explosion multiplying capacity that you have. Put your hand on somebody and say you have the capacity to explode. You have the capacity to explode. See, if John was here, he would say, Yes, Cheryl, we know you have the capacity to explode. Now, and so, here's what this new era is doing here. It's causing us to watch our captivity break off of what we've got. Now, do this with your hand and tell somebody next to you to watch this break. You have to say, I, I got to break through something. It's, you got to watch me break through. Because if you don't, we can't get into that promise multiplying right. It's also about the angels coming in and establishing themselves to say, listen, here's what the Word of God says, people. You have to go with the Word. It says you move the angels based upon your command. And so all of a sudden they come down here and say, well, you did something to get me down here. What are you going to do with me now? Now that you've got me here, what are we going to do? Where is that little guy that, there he is. He was, that angel was standing right next to you. Now, if he was standing over by you at that door, you need to say, where are we going? How are we going to move forward? My family. How am I going to move forward? How is the group I'm with going through the new door? See, that's the way you start seeing it. And then we have to be sent again. Look at somebody and say, we got to be sent again. That man. Get the man over for me to send him. I, I mean, you've got to be commissioned again. You've got to be commissioned to leave, and then you get commissioned again when you get there. That's why it was important we come here to commission you to leave. And that means you're going to leave and you're going to start thinking totally different. And all of a sudden it says you're going to build your future. Future means you're getting your, the word really is expectation. In the word of God. It's not a word called future in the, in the word of God. It's called expectation. You are expecting to get to a place that you have not been to before. And the enemy hates that worse than anything. Because he would have you settle down, retire, and die today. Look at somebody near you and say, if you're 80 and above, this is your decade. If you're not 80 or above, you got plenty of time to keep moving. And if you're breathing, you're moving. That's actually what it means. Life is movement. Life is movement. Life comes from breath. If you are breathing, you are moving. So don't sit there and say, I'm not going anywhere. If you're breathing, you're moving somewhere. You're just not seeing the movement around you. 
Now, so with that, God does something. All of a sudden, he drops this plumb line and he says, I'm ready to build again. I'm realigning heaven and earth. I'm setting a new order. And today, based upon that order, you're going to start walking in a new sequence. Because I've got a place for you to get to. And I already know how to multiply what you've got to get you there. Because that's the very next thing he teaches them. And, and this is what he says to them. He says, uh, immediately, Jesus made them get in a boat and say, I want you to cross the sea. I want, to, I want you to go the other side. And he didn't get in the boat with them. See, I think that's something we have to understand. He doesn't always jump in the boat with us because he wants to see how we're going to make it across. Because he already knows whether we're going to make it across or not. And he says, you know, I'm not going to let you drown, Peter, even if you jump out of the boat. And that's what happened. He got out. That's the passage where he got out of the boat. But I'm going to make sure you're moving in the process you're supposed to be moving in. So you're not thinking, I'm going to get in the boat and row it for you. Which would be nice. That's why I have Chad and Aaron with me. I said, just in case the Lord didn't go with us, y'all row it. <laughs> See, you got to have a plan. But what he's here to say to you today, you're moving into your next season. I think I said it the last time I came. I prophesied the next season was coming. Now you're here. The end of the season is here. Now you're being commissioned to get out. And you need it to be sent out of the last season. So God brought you here, wherever you're from, to be sent out of your last season. That's why you're here. To send you out of that last season so you can prosper more than you did in that last season because he's already started blessing and breaking open how you going to go. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Break it open. Break it open. Because he's ready to build the future. Let's stand up. Now, I brought this new mantle for you. Y'all face that crowd out there. Because this is for all of us in here. I don't even think I have one of these yet. This mantle is filled with clocks. And the clocks are already lined up. And they're like fruited together. Because when you're going to step in time, new fruit's going to come forth. Step in time, new fruit's going to come forth. It's going to be a process of five months before you are established in the time of your future. Now hear my word. The word from the Lord to all of us. It will be a process of five months before you are established into the time of your future. Therefore, I am timing your steps to get you there. And now I'm saying this season that you have accomplished is coming to an end today. And you are being set and commissioned to build something that will not look exactly like anything you've known. Amen. And the Lord says, I am sending many to go with you. 
I am sending many in this place here. I brought you here because now your time of ending and beginning is occurring. And even that new book you've written, the Lord says it's about the beginning. Not last season, but the beginning of what you see needs to happen in the future. I say to you, your eyesight will change today. You will see differently today. Your provision will change today. You will move today in a way you have not moved. And you will say, but I don't feel anything and I don't see anything. And the Lord says, bring me something and watch me speak a blessing on it. Bring it and watch me speak a blessing over it. Watch me break it open. Then you'll see baskets full of what you couldn't see in the last season. So, Lord, we loose that today. And we send the Rosellis forth as a model for breakthrough. As a model for multiplication. And as a model of building the future, and the future says to you today, I'm already prepared to receive you. Let's give a shout and thank God for what he's doing. Now, I'm going to turn this back to Peter, but I am going to ask James if he would just sing one more time over us to breathe. Because when we breathe, the change that is necessary to breathe out comes in. Sing, we breathe you in. 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 lift your hands I just saw like a billow being opened up and, and air being pulled into our lives anybody else think about this I don't know but 
we heard about how time is moving forward and I was thinking about turning the clock ahead last night I don't know about you but literally time moved forward you know I was starting this morning saying I want my hour back but now I'm not saying that anymore because time is moving forward it's a new season you don't get to go back right <laughs> I mean you can't make that one up right so um, if you're visiting and you don't know, we're going to be moving out of this building, if that wasn't obvious to you from everything that was said today. And we've been here 11 years, and on May 1st, we'll be holding our first meeting in the new location, which is three miles away from here. And it is a different model, and it's going to be awesome. I know a lot of you have already come up and, and given an offering, but we just want to honor the Lord because that's what we do when we come together, right? We give him our first fruits and we give him our tithes and our offerings and whatever he puts on our heart to do. So if you still have your offering, please lift it up into the air because we just want to bless it as holy to the Lord. You know, we, we meet on Sunday mornings, I believe, because Jesus rose from the dead on a Sunday morning. It's to remind us of resurrection life and it's to remind us that without him, we have nothing. We wouldn't have even woken up today. We wouldn't even have the breath if it wasn't for the Lord, right? And that Bible says that everything we have is a gift from Him. So just thank Him for all the gifts. Amen. Where would we be without you, Lord? Whew. We ask you to bless the offering, Lord. We ask you to break it open and multiply it. We speak over that offering. We speak over the favor that you've given us in our lives favor to prosper so that we can advance the kingdom of God in the earth. We agree, Lord, with your word that the things we do here aren't going to last, but the things we do for eternity are going to be forever. And we just speak change lives, change lives. What these funds are going to be used to see your kingdom come in this region, people saved, people's lives delivered from every form of oppression to walk in the fullness of who you have us to be. So, you know, we said before that that person you were speaking over was a weapon of mass destruction in the hand of the Lord. Speak that over your envelope, too, all right? Look at your envelope. Say, you are a weapon of mass destruction to the enemy's kingdom. So we ask you to bless these offerings that are being held up. Go ahead, just wave it and say, Lord, we bless this offering right now. We're going to ask you to just come up and drop it in these baskets and then we'll just sing a song on the way out and you all have an awesome time and the freedom that the Lord has given us today. Amen. So come on up and bring it up and speak over it as you drop it in. We'll do Waymaker. Even when I don't see it Even when I don't feel it You never stop you never stop even when I don't see it even when I don't feel it you never stop you never stop that's who you are that is who you are that is who you are that is who you are. Come on, way maker. You are the way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. If you want, uh, we have fellowship upstairs. If you don't want to run out today, you can go upstairs and join with brothers and sisters from all over the region that came here today. Just want to bless you if you got to go. But we just want to say as you're going that he's going to make a way in front of you as you go. A light unto my path, a lamp unto my feet. Yes, that is who you are. That is who you are. And our prayer team is here, and they're working. So if you need prayer, come on up that aisle right there, and you'll be assigned to a team. You are here. 